I want to pray for St. Luke. Amen. The gospel according to St. Luke chapter number 7. If you're sitting next to someone tonight that does not have their Bible or their nook or their crook or the iPad and what else is the other stuff? The e-pad. And... Why y'all looking at me? Y'all know I don't know much about technology. Y'all just should say amen. Amen. It, whatever praise God you look at the word on. Amen. Get your Bible. Let, we want to look at the word and let your neighbor look at the word. Have you found it? St. Luke chapter 7 verse 11. And it came to pass the day after that he went into a city called Nain. And many of his disciples were with him and much people. Now when he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And much of the people in the city were with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her, and he said unto her, Weep not. And he came and touched the buyer, and, and they that bear him stood still. And he said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak. And he delivered him to his mother, and there came a fear on all, and they glorified God, saying, There is a great prophet risen among us, and God has visited his people. The word of God for the people of God. Let the saints say amen. amen. Come on, say it with power. Say amen. amen. Let's look together, shall we, at verse 11. And it came to pass the day after that he went into a city called Nain, and many of his disciples went with him and much people. Let's look at it just one more time. And it came to pass the day after. And he went into a city called Nain, and many of, this, of his disciples were with them and much people. Grab the hand of the neighbor that you're sitting next to tonight, and I promise not to make you talk to him all night tonight, but get them by a hand and say, neighbor. neighbor. Come on, say it in your prophesying voice. Say, neighbor. neighbor. I, don't care I don't care what you're going through. You're going through. There, is there is a day after. A day after. Come on, clap your hands and shout glory to God. Amen. Grab that neighbor. Amen. One more time and say, neighbor. neighbor. Talk to them both. Say, neighbor. neighbor. This, is this is the tomorrow we talked about, we talked about yesterday, yesterday. The, day the day after. Come on, clap your hands and shout glory to God. Amen. Now, you might want somebody, amen, you might be sitting next to somebody that wants you to be stuck in what you're going through today. So just wave your hand and say, there is a day after. Come on, clap your hands and praise him. Amen, 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 amen. We're in a woman's conference, and so I think it's only right to teach the word from a woman's perspective. Say amen. amen. And I just believe, praise God, that if we had to give the church a gender, we had to assign to the church, amen. If we had to say that the church was male or female, I believe that it's theologically sound and hermeneutically correct to say the church is a woman. Say amen. 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 Certainly, praise God, the word can bear that out because whenever the father speaks about the relationship of Jesus to the church, he calls Jesus the bridegroom and the church the bride. I wish you would say something. And even the brethren, we thank God for the brethren that are here tonight, but even the brethren, when it comes to the body of Christ, you take on some feminine attributes. Say amen. Amen. And we're not saying anything, praise God, more than that. But Paul said, I travail again. Till Christ be formed in you. And so even, praise God, the brethren, amen, take on. The church is the womb. It's the womb of the Osha. It's the womb of the saints, and she is a woman. And so tonight, we will look at the word from, praise God, a woman's perspective. Amen. The writer of this book is St. Luke. Amen. And we know, praise God, by occupation, Luke is a physician. And being a physician, certainly just because of his trade, you would think that he would be extremely specific. Specificity would be part of his vocation. But as we look at the text tonight, amen, we see that Luke is neglected in telling us this woman's name. That this woman, praise God, in Luke chapter 7 is one of the 24 unnamed women in the Bible. Isn't it something that people can know your problem and not even know your name? That, that you can come to church, I want to have church tonight and y'all don't want to help me. That you can come to church and sit next to someone and they try to figure out, is your hair real? Talk to me tonight. And they want to know, is it a loony or a doony? Come on, say something. And they have no idea what you had to go through today just to get to church. That you say, oh, I can't get any help up in here. Hey, Amen. You're sitting next to somebody that he called Moshe. If they knew what you just went through this week. Then grab your hands and help you praise God. Come on, clap your hands and praise him right there. 
And so praise God, amen, amen, the person sitting next to you tonight, you want to be able to tell that person you're in the right place at the right time. Grab that neighbor, say, neighbor, neighbor. you're in the right place. Talk to them, say you sat next to the right person. Because you're going to get a charge tonight. Because God's going to do so much for me. It's going to roll off of me and hit you. Clap your hands so you're in the right place. Tell your neighbor it's no accident that you're here tonight. Because God's going to touch me. And he's going to touch me so profoundly. It's going to jump off of me and hit you. Hit that neighbor and say, right place, right place, right place. Amen. It is no accident that you sat next to who you sat next to tonight. And so we have, praise God, this unnamed sister. Amen. Luke did not, amen, tell us anything about her person, but he did tell us a little, about, a little bit about her problem. The Bible says that she lived in a place called Nain. Isn't it something, beloved, that life can be, praise God, so so horrific life can be so challenging and oftentimes if we're not careful our, our situations and our circumstances will relegate us to a second class citizenship huh that, that life has a way i need to talk back church tonight that life has a way of being so devastating, that life can be so horrific, that so many catastrophic things can happen in life, that if you're not careful, the devil will make you feel as though you're a second-class citizen, huh? The devil will make you feel like you're inferior. I need someone to say something. The devil will make you feel, praise God, that you'll always live on Battle Do Avenue and Little Bit Lane. Come on, say amen. Life has a way. Life has a way of, of devastating us. Life has a way, praise God, of stripping us of our dreams and our hopes. Life has a way of crippling our potential and robbing us of our innovation. And we find ourselves, praise God, living, praise God, amen, beneath what God has called us to do. And when life does that, we begin to build walls. Come on, somebody say walls. Amen. The wonderful thing, praise God, about women is that we are masters of disguise. Look at the person next to you and say, you have no idea who you sit next to. And tell that neighbor, say, neighbor, if you knew who I used to be, you jump up and move to someplace else. So tell your neighbor you have no idea. I wish I could have church tonight on a Friday night. They shout in the club on Friday night. They, they shout at the game on Friday night. They holler at the football game on Friday night. They're screaming in the hotel on Friday night. They shout at the casino. The least you could do is clap your hands in the church. Yes, 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 yes. Amen, because, praise God, of what life takes us through because the devil is so busy and because we have an adversary that's, amen, constantly seeking ways, praise God, to devour the blessings God has for our lives, we find ourselves, if we're not careful, living in a place, praise God, where we have to, amen, disguise ourselves. And women are masters of disguises. You never know who we are behind the lashes and the hair. I need the sisters to say something. And we have learned, praise God, amen, to paint smiles on our faces when our hearts are bleeding. And we've learned, praise God, amen, to erect walls of pride when we're insecure. Talk to me. And erect walls of, amen, anger when we're really in pain. And erect walls of sarcasm when we're really uh, experiencing rejection. To erect walls of lust when we're really lonely. When life tears you down so you got to build up walls. Squeeze that neighbor by the hands. They don't take it personal, neighbor. Life did this to me. Look at that one behind you. Say, don't take it personal. You came in tonight and you sat next to someone that, amen, even though you're in the house of God, didn't speak warmly back. You sit next to someone, praise God, in the house of the living God. They're, they're, sometimes they're more friendlier in the club. You got a warmer reception in the club than you got tonight. Hit that neighbor and say, take down your wall, take down your wall. Come on, tell your neighbor, hug me, take down your wall. Tell that neighbor, I know who you are anyway. I know who you are anyway. Clap your hands and praise him right there. Life has a way. 
Life has a way when our sin finds us out, praise God. When life relegates us to the cesspool of mediocrity and loneliness and lust and perversion. Amen. We, praise God, defer back to, praise God, the way of our parents. We begin to sew together fig leaves to hide who we are. Tonight, so many of us know what it means to have walls up. And for many of you, it makes sense to have walls up because you learned to kiss from your father while your mother laid in bed and pretended to be asleep. Amen. So many of you tonight are victims of molestation and incest. So many of you tonight are victims of verbal abuse, emotional abuse, physical abuse. So many of you tonight are the victims of neglect, praise God, and mistreatment. Amen. And so, amen, just to survive, you had to build up walls. Amen. Just to stay sane, I need to talk back church tonight. You had to build up walls just to go to work every day. This is not who you want to be, but you had to build up walls. Because childhood taught you, if I don't pull up a wall, praise God, I could get hurt. And you're determined not to hurt anymore. And so you erected walls. Squeeze that hand and say, tear down the wall, tear down the wall. And, 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 and if, but the wonderful thing about God... If you are called by the king, if there is divine purpose for your life, the walls are going to come come down. Yeah. Touch that neighbor and say, if God has a plan for you, the walls are going to come tumbling down. I wish you would just lay your hands on your neighbor and say, the walls are going to come tumbling down. I wish you would clap your hands and praise them right there. Somebody shout every wall, every wall, every wall of loneliness, every wall of insecurity, every wall of anger. Come on, clap your hands. Every wall of pain, every wall of rejection, every wall of abuse, every wall of perversion, every wall. Somebody jump up and say, let the walls come tumbling down. If you live for God, there's going to be, praise God, you're going to have an appointment with the king, and the walls will come tumbling down, amen. Look at the text. We know that happens because we, amen, Luke tells us that this unnamed woman lived in a place called Nain. And Nain, praise God, was a small, insignificant city. But what was significant about it is it had no walls, Amen. It, 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 it was a defenseless, vulnerable little city. Amen. In those times, amen, those of you that are familiar with biblical history, amen, that was, that was the pride of Jericho, the walls, remember? Amen. The, the pride of any city, the pride, praise God, of the state, the pride of the nation in those days were the walls that they had erected. Nain had no walls. If you live for God, God's going to call you to a place called Nain. If, praise God, there is destiny for your life, I can't get nobody to say nothing. Amen. God is going to move you to a place called name. You'll find yourself in a situation where all of your walls have come tumbling down. And you stand, praise God, vulnerable. And you're naked. And you're transparent. And how many of you know God can only help you when you lift your hands to God? That God has a way of manipulating our circumstances until we find ourselves with our back up against the wall. And we got to come out with our hands up. I don't care who you're sitting next to tonight. Everyone in here lives in a place called Nain. You may live in the projects of Nain. You may live in the suburbs of Nain. You may live in the inner city of Nain. You may live in rural Nain. But hit that neighbor say, everybody. Yeah. Look them dead in the face. Say, everybody. Yeah lives in name if you mean that clap your hand and shout glory to god come on clap your hands and praise them right there if you want the walls to come down praise them right there come on the old clap your hand and shout glory to god she lived praise god she lived in a place called name no matter what part of name you stay in it's name just the same Sometimes, praise God, we hide behind the walls of our influence. We hide behind the walls of our influence. Our money makes no difference, praise God, his name. Hit that neighbor and say, it's name just the same. Amen. When God has purpose for your life, he brings us to a place where you're vulnerable. Certainly, praise God, in our economy at this time. Amen. In this dire dilemma that our nation finds itself in, praise God, we're all coming out with our hands up. 
Amen. They're foreclosing and they're downsizing and they're laying off and picking up and putting out. And amen. Everybody, come on, say amen. And it's incumbent upon us now to learn to get along because you don't know who you'll be learning, living with now. Clap your hands and shout glory. glory. And so, praise God, this woman, amen, she lives in a place called Maine, amen. She lives in a little, amen, defenseless city. We all live there. We try so, we try so desperately not to let people know. But God brings us to the place where the walls fall down and people are able to see us as we really are. And you you say, prophetess, why must the walls fall down? Because the supernatural cannot step in until the natural steps out. As long as you can fix it, as long as you can work it out, as long as you have the answer, as long as you have the money, as long as you have the cook hookup, God will let you. But when you lift your hand and say, I can't fix it anymore. When you lift your hand and say, God, I can't work it out. When you lift your hand and say, God, I can't make it happen. The minute the natural slides out, the supernatural steps in. Hit your name and say, get ready for a supernatural visitation. I wish some Somebody would help me praise God up in here. Grab your neighbor, say, neighbor, step out so God can step in. Clap your hands and shout glory. Yeah, yeah, God allows us, amen. Some of us, amen, nobody likes to live in Nain, but God allows us to go to Nain and he allows us to stay there. Amen, because as I said, amen, the supernatural can only come in when the natural comes out. You say, prophetess, what do you mean? You remember when the children of Israel left Egypt, and the Bible said, praise God, during the sojourn in the wilderness, he sent manna from heaven. And he sent quail, the meat, praise God, of the quail. Amen, the whole time they were in the wilderness experience, they ate supernatural food. There was no food there. There was no natural way, amen, to produce food. And so because there was no natural answer, God provided a supernatural one. But the minute they came to Canaan, amen, he cut off the supernatural food. Because he said in Canaan, praise God, there's vines there. And there are grapevines. And you eat grapevines, you eat grapes of the vines that you didn't plant. And it was a land flowing of milk and honey. Sometimes we come during, amen, to the end of ourselves. Many of you are sitting here tonight and you're discouraged because of the economy. You're, you're discouraged because of what you lost. You're discouraged about what's happening, but this is the time to get happy because God is moving out the, the natural so he can do something supernatural. Hit your name and say, get ready for a supernatural visitation. I can't get no help up in here. I wish somebody would praise him right there. Throw up your hands and shout supernatural. I can't get no help. Somebody here called me. Set that up emotion. And my son not Hit that neighbor, say, get ready, get ready. God's getting ready to do something supernatural. Hit that neighbor, say, get out of the way. God's going to step in and do something supernatural. Push that neighbor, say, get out of the way. Pull down your walls. Throw up your hands and shout glory. God's on the way. Clap your hands, say, God's on the way. God's on the way. I wish you looked down your road, say, supernatural, supernatural. Push that person and get out the way. You're blocking something supernatural. You're trying to hold on to $500 and God's got $500,000. Come on, clap your hands and get out of the way. Get out of the way. Come on, I want to have church tonight. Push that neighbor and get out of the way. You're blocking a miracle. Clap your hand and shout glory. Shout glory. And you're sitting next to somebody that amen is just looking so touch the neighbor and say neighbor if you don't want yours I'll take yours too come on tell your neighbor get ready I need someone to throw up your hands and say I believe God clap your hands and say I believe God my money is small and my bills are tall but I believe God trouble is everywhere clap your hands and say I believe when you live in Maine, you have a way of saying, Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know if you withdraw yourself from me. Where will I go? When you live in Maine, you're in a but God situation. Grab your neighbor and say, I'm in a but God situation. Can't nobody fix this but God. Oh, I wish somebody would praise him. Can't nobody work it out but God. Can't nobody change it but God. Can't nobody heal it but God. But clap your hands and say, God will. Come on and praise him. God will. Say yes. 
说 Yes. When you live in Maine, you're in a but God situation. Hit that neighbor and say, I'm in a but God situation. Come on, clap your hands right there one more time. And so God manipulates our circumstances. Amen. He changes things. Amen. He allows. Amen. I tell people all the time, the saddest day, praise God. Amen. Despite the fact that the devil's going to spend his life in the hell he made for everybody else. The saddest day of the devil's going to be when he finds out he was working for God all the time. That the devil is God's best employee. Grab your neighbor. Say he's going to find out. He's been working for God all the time. Because God is the only person that can take all of my pain. And all of my trouble. And all of my hurt. Mix it in a pot. Say put your finger in it. And I say I've tasted and seen that the Lord is good. And all things. Somebody turn around and say all things. I want to have church and y'all won't help me. Text that neighbor and say all things when you mix them up in the pot it works together for my good high five that neighbor so I'm in a win-win situation tell them for the first time in my life I'm in a win-win situation I can't be careful I can't lose for winning clap your hands and shout boy did this. Hit your neighbor. Say, God did this. Squeeze your neighbor by the hand. Say, neighbor. You can't lose your mind because you lost a car. Because you're going to need your mind for the next car. Hit that neighbor. Say, you can't lose your mind because you lost a house. You're going to need your mind for the next house. And ladies, you can't lose your mind because you lost a man. I'm going to need my mind for the next man. Grab your neighbor. Say, I'm trading in my now for my next. Tell your neighbor next. I want to have church tonight. Hit somebody. Say, next. God is going to pick up the remote control of your life and say next hit your neighbor say next get ready for the next miracle get ready for the next breakthrough get ready for the next touch the next visitation the next turnaround the next breakout and the next break in tell your neighbor I'm trading in my now for my next clap your hand and shout He brings us to a place of vulnerability. He brings us to a place of dependence. He brings us to a place of transparency because he wants to work a miracle in our lives. Amen. He wants to strip us of all of our natural, praise God, amen, all the machinations of our flesh. He wants to rid us of Hagar and Ishmael and all of those things of our flesh and bring the Isaac into our life. And nothing like a name, nothing like transparency. When you find out you can't make it without God. Squeeze that neighbor's hands, I can't make it without him. Oh, tell your neighbor, I wish I knew that a long time ago. I just found out I can't make it without him. Oh, tell your neighbor, I can't make it, I can't make it, I can't make it. We thought the degree was going to help us. And now we got a master's and we don't have a job. We thought the man was going to make us. He's moved out and pushed out and took out and we, oh, I tell your neighbor, I can't make it without him. He brings us to a place of vulnerability. He brings us to a place. Will we lift our hands and say, I can't make it without you. Nobody wants to stay in name. Amen. You've got to only imagine, praise God, in those days, the terror of living in a city without walls. The walls were necessary to keep the enemy out. Amen. The thicker the wall, the more difficulty, amen, the enemy had of penetrating, praise God, the city and taking captives. Amen. The devil wants you to think you need your wall of pride. He wants you to think that you need that sharp, ugly tongue. He wants you to think, praise God, that you need, amen, you need that arrogant, praise God, demeanor and arrogance. It's first cousin to ignorance. I wish somebody would say something. He wants you to think, praise God, that you need the twist in your hip and the wink in your eye, amen, to make you, praise God, somebody. When in actuality, the minute you drop it, God is able to come in. And so he brings us to name. That's where she lives. 
Nobody wants to live there. Amen. You've got to only imagine it's a painful place. Amen. You've got to imagine, praise God, what they went through. Amen. God has a way, saints, of keeping us in our painful places. Grab, grab the hand of the neighbor that's sitting next to you. Amen, amen. Sometimes, amen, certainly God is a God that brings us out of things. But every now and then, God, amen, strengthens us to stay in the place of pain. Amen. Every now and then, praise God. Amen. God, amen, tells us to occupy. To stay here. Now you say, why would he tell me to stay in a place of pain? Because if he meets you in a good place, it's not a miracle. It's called a miracle because he met me in a bad place. If he met you on a good job, it wouldn't be called a miracle. If it was a good marriage, it wouldn't be called a miracle. But when you're in a bad situation and God slides in, you'll go up and say, that's a miracle. And so, praise God, he allows us to stay in our places of pain. And he allows us to do that because it's our pain that makes us relative. It's our pain, excuse me, that makes us relevant. Amen. Amen. The only thing that makes us relevant, the only thing, praise God, amen, that, that makes us significant to life is our pain. It is our misery that gives us ministry. Amen, amen, you, 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 amen. And, and so you say, well, what, what are you saying, prophetess? You remember, praise God, in the Old Testament when, when Pharaoh gave the edict to kill all the male children. Do you remember that? And the midwives, amen, were sent to kill the baby boys. And, 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 and they said, well, listen, we, we can't kill them because by the time we get there, them girls and had those babies and went on back to doing what they were doing. And so, amen, Pharaoh says, throw them in the Nile. Every young boy, two and younger, amen, throw them in the Nile. And so you can only imagine the Nile River flowing with the blood of the Israelites' children. But, but not only was that horrific, you've got to understand that the Nile River was the only, was a major source of water to the Israelites. And so every time the women had to wash, Every time the women had to get water for cooking or drinking, they had to go to the Nile. Isn't it something how God will cause you to visit over and over your place of pain, your place, amen. Sometimes he nails you to the place of the most horrific experience of your life. Sometimes the most devastating situation, you're there and you look at it day by day. You see your stepfather that raped you every day. You see the husband that blacked your eyes. You see, praise God the mother that was distant and abusive amen he has a way of making us stay see him now that every day they visit the place of your pain I teach in my church we were doing a series on forgiveness and I said it's one thing for someone to hurt you and you, you and you disconnect yourself from that person but it's more than a notion when you live with your abuser when every day Amen, you've got to go back to the place, amen, and live in the place with the person that hurt you that morning. See the children of Israel, see those women visiting the Nile River. Every time they're going, they can hear the cries of their babies. Every time they, they, they go to get water, they can imagine the little legs, the little arms of their children. And some people think, what kind of God would cause you to revisit that every single day? But, but what you didn't know, God was up to something. Squeeze your neighbor by the hand and say, God is up to something. Because there was a little Hebrew woman by the name of Joshebed. And she had a baby boy. And she said, it seemed like this boy is going to be special to me. And the Bible said she wove together a basket. Uh, covered that basket in pitch. Uh, put that baby in the water, in that basket. And floated that basket down the Nile River. That baby that came floating down that same river was Moses. Uh, isn't it something uh, that sometimes our greatest deliverance uh, comes floating down the river of our pain? Uh, I can't get any help up in here. Sometimes God uses our place of pain to bring deliverance. God will anoint me to grab the people out of the thing that I just got out of. Grab your neighbor and say, I'm here to help you get out of the thing I just got out of. Clap your hands and shout glory. And so Moses, 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 the deliverer of the children of Israel, comes, praise God, floating up the same river that killed, praise God, their sons. Amen. God was up to something. Clap your hands and God was up to something. 
Yes, praise God. She lived. She lived in Maine. And the Bible says something had happened to her. Amen. That she, her son had died. Now, now, for those of us that are like me, for the single people, a son represents, praise God, would be representative of as the future. Certainly because of the, the, the dilemma our country finds itself in. Now, praise God, what we thought that we were going to have in the future. Amen. The 401k, the big job, the house. We see it slipping away. We see, praise God, as single women, you know how you say, when, when I'm 30, I'm going to have this. And when I'm 35, I'll be here. And when I'm 40, now you're 45 and you don't have any of it. The Bible said that her son was dead. Amen. Son represent future. Some of you sitting here today and you're faced with the dismal picture of your future. Some of you have gone to school only to find out that there are no jobs for you. Some of you, praise God, are faced, amen, with, with, with skills that you, that you obtained for another career. And now that career has been, praise God, replaced by computers. Some of you, amen, look now at the future that you thought was going to be yours, and it looks dead. Here tonight, bad enough to live in name, but she is a woman that's lost her son. She's lost her future. But not only had she lost her son, the Bible says she was a widow. And you can only imagine, amen, you know, amen, historically in the Bible that a woman was a second-class citizen. Not only was she a not only was she a woman, she was a woman without a man. And, and even, praise God, in the Bible, a woman without a man was a bad situation. Even in the Bible, amen, a woman was defined by the man that she was attached to. Some of you are sitting here tonight, and that's why you can't clap your hands, and that's why you can't shout, amen, because there is no man, amen. For those of you that are single like me, a man represents present source, in the days of the Bible, amen, it was the man that provided praise God for the home. It was the man that made provision for his family, amen. She was a widow bad enough that her son was dead. Her future was dead. Her, her present source was dead too. Some of you are sitting here today and you're allowing life to define you by whether or not you have a man. Some of you, amen, you feel, praise God, like this woman. You feel relegated to a second-class citizenship because you're not Mrs. Somebody. Because society tells you that you're nobody unless you're Mrs. Somebody. Hit your neighbor and say, the devil is a liar. Come on, clap your hand and say, the devil is a liar. Here, praise God. She's in a bad situation. No son, future is dead. A widow, no man, the present is dead. And the Bible says in the opening of this text that they're carrying her dead son out of the city. Some of you here tonight, there are people that have already wrote the eulogy of your life. They've carried, praise God, amen, they're preparing the funeral for your future. They've already said you weren't going to be nobody. They've already said you weren't going to have anybody. They've already told you that you're over the hill. They've already told you that your biological tick, clock has stopped ticking. Not only is it stopped ticking, it is broke. They've already told you. I wish somebody would say something. There's a funeral going on. There's somebody that's already, praise God, amen, got the headstone. There's somebody around you telling you that it's all over. And not only, praise God, is there somebody around you, for many of you, you're telling yourself that. And so, praise God, amen, you've marked yourself down and you've called yourself worthless. I, I had an opportunity to minister in Paris, and I tell people this all the time, in London, and while I was in London, I went over to Paris, and I went into the Louis Vuitton store. And, and during that time, amen, there was nobody in the store, and, and, and I'm, I, I'm, a, I'm a bargain shopper. So I went into the Louis Vuitton store, and there was nobody there but this little woman, amen, and she wasn't real friendly. And I walked up to her, and I said, I said, I said show me, show me uh, the sale. Do you have any sales? She looked at me very cool and said, Louis Vuitton never goes on sale. <laughs> and when I was standing in that store, the Holy Ghost said, Janet, be like Louis Vuitton. Never go on sale. Huh? Hit that girlfriend. Say, don't put yourself on sale. Huh? I can't get no help up in here. Huh? Tell your neighbor I may be an antique, huh? but an antique is more expensive. Huh? I can't get no help up in here. Huh? Grab your neighbor. Say, I'm a Louis Vuitton. Huh? I never go on sale. Huh? I'm not going. 
gonna mark myself down. I'm not gonna put myself on the discount table. I will not go to the scratch and dip store. Somebody tell you I'm a Louis Vuitton baby. I'll never go on sale. Clap your hands and shout glory. You cannot allow life to mark you down. You cannot allow life to put you on the discount table. You cannot allow life to relegate you to the scratch and dip. You got to stand up and say, I may not be brand new, but I am an antique. And antiques cost more. If you're not careful, if you're not careful, life has a way. Now you're sitting next to a little young girl around you. You're sitting next to a little young girl. So look at her and say, you're contemporary furniture, baby. And you're real pretty. Tell her you're real cute. But I'm an antique. I cost more. I can't get no help up in here. Tell the little young woman next to you, say, you're real pretty. And I like the way you shine. And I like the glossy finish. But I'm an antique. I've been here a long time. And I'm still valuable. I don't depreciate. I appreciate. Every year my price goes up. Clap your hand and shout glory. And I'm not going to get desperate. And I'm not going to get afraid. Because somebody wants this Louis Vuitton. There's somebody that wants a real one. There's somebody that don't want a fake one. I'm going to wait till somebody goes up that can afford my pride. That young woman stood there calm, cool, and collected. When you go, praise God, when you go into some of the little stores, they'll tell you, well, we'll mark down, we'll take off 30%, we'll take off 10%. That woman stood in Louis Vuitton and told me, lady, you can walk out of the store because I'm not going to sweat. I'm not going to try to get you to buy because all I have to do is stand here. There's somebody that still wants a real Louis Vuitton. To grab your neighbor and say, I'm not getting ready to run behind a man. I'm not getting ready to get into sin. I'm not going with anybody's husband. I wish somebody would say something. I'm not going to put footprints on the ceiling in a fork in some hotel down the road. I'm going to stand right here. I wish somebody would help me because God's going to bring a man into my life that's willing to pay the price. And if a man don't show up, I'll just stand here and be a pretty antique. Clap your hands and shout glory. Shout glory. You've got to say. You've got to say. I will not mark myself down. Grab that neighbor. Say, neighbor, if you mark down your price, nobody will argue about it. Everybody's looking for a deal. Everybody's looking for a sale. She wasn't offended, praise God, when I asked her about a sale. She just let me know what none going on. And that's how you've got to be in life. How many of you know you have to let people know there's nothing on sale here? Clap your hands and there ain't nothing on sale here. I wish you would clap your hands and tell the devil that. There's nothing on sale here. I'm not marking nothing down. I was wonderfully and marvelously made. I'm somebody in God. God's got a plan for me. And I'm going to stand right here till God's plan shows up. Clap your hands and shout glory. She, seemingly, seemingly she was in a horrible situation. Seemingly, this was the worst day of her life. The day that a widow's only son died. Every possibility of reproduction. Every possibility of increase. Every possibility of starting over was dead. It was being carried out of the city. Amen. Every, every dream, every hope. Anybody here knows what it feels like to think you're losing everything? Amen. She sees her last hope carried out of the city. Seemingly, this is her last day. But how many of you know you're not who you are because of your best days? But you're who you are because of the bad days. How many of you know that in, praise God, the equation of your life, God, praise God, took into account every painful situation, every negative thing. And it's not your good days that gave you that anointing. It's your bad days that taught you how to eat kebo satarabosha. You didn't learn how to pray because you drove a BMW. You learned how to pray because you caught a bus. You didn't learn how to pray because you ate at Ruth Chris. You learned how to pray because you used to eat with food stamps. So hit your neighbor, say, it's my bad thing that helped me be who I am. And 
the equation, in the equation of our life, God takes into account, praise God, the worst days of our life and adds it with the best days of our life to make us who we are. And so we learn to lift our hands and say, there's a beautiful side of trouble. There's a different, that's a different sermon for a different day. Because I am what I am because of the bad things I went on. Amen. Looking at the text, we're getting ready to go. Seemingly, this is the worst day of her life. For many of you sitting here today, it's the worst day. The economy's worse than it's ever been. Houses foreclosed, cars picked up, layoff, downsizing. Children in trouble, husbands, praise God, amen, wives, amen. Seemingly for so many of you, it's the worst day of your life. But we said, praise God, sometimes God allows us to go through some things. Sometimes he allows us to come to the end of ourselves where every natural opportunity has been closed so the supernatural can step in. Amen. God has a way. Now, as we look through the Bible, and I'm almost through, we see an equation. We see divine intervention with human participation brought about the miraculous. Let me say that again. Amen. Previously in the Bible, we have seen divine intervention. God, with human participation, Sarah and Abraham brought about a miracle. Huh? Divine intervention with human participation. Hannah and her husband. Amen. They get Samuel. Isn't that right? Divine, praise God, intervention. Amen. Elizabeth and Zacharias. They get John the Baptist. Amen. Sometimes in our life, God allows, praise God, human participation. To amen, to come together with divine intervention to work your miracle. But every now and then, God takes out human, amen, participation. Sometimes God puts, amen, puts you in a situation where he says, I want to get the glory out of this. And when you come out of this, ain't nobody going to get the glory but God. Hit your neighbor, say, neighbor, ain't nobody going to get the glory but God when you come out of this. Throw up your hands, say, when I come out of this, ain't nobody going to get the glory but God. Clap your hands and shout glory somebody shout glory lift your hand and say when I come out of this ain't nobody gonna get the glory but God sometimes sometimes God factors out human participation sometimes he eliminates praise God human involvement amen to make sure nobody gets the glory but God and so here praise God the widow woman no husband no present source. The widow woman, praise God, no son, no future source. Amen. At, praise God, the end of her rope, the worst day of her life, until God comes. The Bible says, Jesus passed by. Grab the hand of your neighbor. Say, neighbor, this weekend, Jesus is going to pass by. Grab that neighbor. Say, neighbor, you got to be prayerful this weekend. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, you've got to be alert this weekend. Tell your neighbor, you've got to be discerning this weekend. Because this is the weekend Jesus is going to pass by. Clap your hands. Say, Jesus is passing by. Oh, hit that neighbor. Say, neighbor, get ready. Jesus is passing by. Somebody just go up and down your own. Say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. The Bible says that Jesus saw her. And how many of you know it doesn't make any difference who sees you? When Jesus sees you, things get ready to happen. Hit that neighbor and say, God seen you. Come on, tell that neighbor, God seen you. Maybe an employer hadn't seen you, but God seen you. Maybe a man hadn't seen you, but God sees you. And when God sees you, things turn around. When God sees you, things get to happen. I wish somebody would just jump up and turn around. Say, my stuff is turning around. My money's turning around. My marriage is turning around. My children are turning around. God has seen me. Hit that neighbor and say, God, God, God. Move from your seat and say, get ready. God's passing by. Move from your seat and tell somebody you don't know, get ready. God's passing by. Tell your neighbor, don't miss it. Tell your neighbor, don't miss it. God's on the way. Clap your hand and shout glory. Clap your hands and say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Come on, saints, I feel something now. Clap your hands and shout, Jesus. Down to my last dime, but Jesus is coming by. I don't have a job, but Jesus is passing by. They picked up my car, but Jesus is passing by. Bump that woman next to say, get out of the way. Jesus is passing by. Tell that neighbor, pull down your walls. Change your attitude. Clap your hands and get ready for a breakthrough. Clap your 
day of her life the worst day of her life and God shows up isn't it something amen the worst day of her life now listen amen a few more seconds see me doesn't it seem like Jesus knew if Jesus knew he was gonna die he could have came while he was comatose isn't that praise God the dilemma of Mary and Martha they told Jesus we called you when he was sick and if you had shown up, he wouldn't have died. How many of you know that every now and then God lets these look like they're dead? Because he wants to have a resurrection day. How many of you know that Easter is not just in March and April, but you can have an Ikobo Shetet Abasa. Tell your neighbors, get ready for your resurrection day. I can't get no help up in here. Tell your neighbor, get ready. Something dead is getting ready to come back to life. God's going to speak to your dead situation. God's going to speak to your dead body. God's going to speak to your jacked up kidneys. God's going to speak. Somebody jump up and say resurrection day. Hug somebody say get ready. It's resurrection day. He's going to resurrect your family. He's going to resurrect your dreams. He's going to resurrect your hope. Clap your hands and get ready. He waited when the woman was at the end of herself. He waited when seemingly, amen, there was amen, it was amen, all hope is gone and it was absolutely hopeless to dream or hope. Some of you, that's where you are tonight. Don't you know, praise God, if all was well in our lives, that praise God, when we had praise and worship, they called the police on us. Because, amen, we shout into the church with rock and roll. But the reason so many of you are sitting here tonight looking at me is because there's a funeral going on in your life. Something's dead. Amen. And then the loved ones and the friends that you counted on to tell you it ain't dead, it ain't dead, it's just sleep. They've gone and got a tombstone and bought a black dress and called the newspaper for a eulogy. But hit your neighbor, say, neighbor, I'm going to give you something to talk about. Come on, you've got people in your life that wrote off your marriage and wrote off your children. You've got people in your life preparing for the funeral of your finances. Uh, the funeral of your family uh, hit your neighbor and say we're going to give them something to talk about because uh, they're getting ready to be a resurrection uh, clap your hand and shout glory said the Bible said Jesus passed by squeeze that hand say Jesus is coming Jesus is coming get that hand talk to that neighbor say just hold on this weekend just hold on huh? grab that neighbor by the hand say hold on hold on huh? look at that neighbor say I promise you you're gonna have a Monday miracle huh? tell your neighbor say get ready for a Monday miracle huh? tell your neighbor he's coming by huh? I wish somebody would clap their hands and say Jesus is coming by huh? hit your neighbor say Jesus Jesus in in the midst of the funeral, Jesus busts up. Amen. Isn't that just the way God does things? He shows up. He busts up in the funeral. Come on, say something. When everybody else got on a black dress, he slides in on blue and say, come on, let's have a party. Hit your neighbor and say, it ain't going to be no funeral. We're getting ready to have a party. I can't get any help up in here. God comes. He busts up in a dead situation. So many of you here tonight are in a dead situation. Seemingly, everything has died. And you can't shout. And that's why we got to beg you to clap your hands and beg you to high-five your neighbor. Turn around and touch this one and take three steps. Amen. Because in your mind, you've already erected a tombstone for your marriage. You've already wrote off your son on crack. You've already wrote off the door to praise God in the alternate lifestyle. You've already, praise God, written off, praise God, your finances. You've already accepted the doctor's diagnosis that you're dying. Amen. Not only are people preparing a funeral for you, but you have too. And so that's why you can't shout and you can't clap your hands. The woman of God was in praise and she was saying how great is our God. It was like pulling teeth up in here. And it's simply because some of you have on black dresses getting ready for funeral. But the wonderful thing about God, a funeral don't stop God. 
Touch your neighbor and say, I'm feeling what don't stop God. Tell your neighbor if you let him in, he'll bust it up. Come on, tell your neighbor he want to bust up your funeral. I wish y'all would clap your hands and praise God. He wants to bust up your funeral. He can't bust up. He wants to bust up your funeral. He had more The Bible said. Bible said when Jesus showed up, squeeze it by the hand, say Jesus is getting ready to show up. Just obey me tonight, say Jesus is ready to bow up. And when Jesus shows up, he don't have to say a whole lot. He touched that boy, say get up. Hit that neighbor, say girl, get up. Hit that neighbor, say get up. I can't get no help up in here. Get up in your mind. Get up in your praise. Get up in your joy. Hit us and get up, get up. Clap your hands and get up. Somebody help me. Get up. It doesn't take, it doesn't take God a whole lot of words. He, he was moved with compassion. I don't care what you're in tonight. God cares. God cares. God cares. Grab that neighbor and say, God cares. I don't care how many times you made mistakes. God cares. Clap your hands and say, God cares. And he's getting ready to speak to your dead situation. Clap your hands and say, God sees. Take off your funeral clothes and get up. Take off your funeral dress. Take off your funeral clothes. Get up. Get up. Move from your seat. Tell her, get up. Tell your neighbor, get up. 